All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Madison, Wisconsin by Darcy Loma. How are you doing, Darcy? Hi, John. Great. I'm doing wonderful. Yeah, and uh, uh, Darcy is one of America's most highly credentialed leadership coaches and Darcy just published a book that, in fact, uh, comes out on June 1st. It's already up there on Amazon. I think you can pre-order, et cetera. So uh, go ahead. Thoughtfully Fit is the culmination of our lifetime work training leaders and teams to achieve, to achieve peak mental fitness and overcome any hurdle effectively. So congratulations on the new book, Darcy. Thank you so much. It's quite a process to publish a book. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, let's let's start there. Tell me a little bit about uh, the genesis of the book and you know, like why you why you wanted to write it and why you feel it uh, it it hits uh, or fulfills a, a need today. Thanks, John. I, the book is thoughtfully fit, and it's a it's your training plan for life and business success, and it's based on the leadership model that I spent years developing. After I uh, started to notice some themes and obstacles that every coaching client brought into our sessions, whether they were an executive or a BP or a frontline mm -hmm. worker. And so Thoughtfully Fit describes those six obstacles that get in the way of, of that achieving that peak performance and the strategies to be able to overcome those hurdles. And so I was working on the book and um, working on the model and my life blew up in, in the most extreme way five days after we finalized Thoughtfully Fit. Um, my husband was arrested for sexual assault of a minor he had met online and I became ground zero to test drive this mm -hmm. model because my attorney said, don't talk to any about anybody about anything. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. I had more obstacles and people problems than I ever could imagine. So this book is a hybrid memoir, self-help leadership book that talks about the strategies, those six hurdles and how I use them to navigate, you know, the, the biggest challenge I've uh -huh. ever experienced in my life. Yeah, so I mean that's a that's quite a quite a motivation and and obviously quite a, a testimonial yourself <laughs> um, to to your own work and um, and obviously I mean it's um, it just shows you how you can apply something like this to the most uh, kind of catastrophic situations that that uh, that appear in your life. So um, so let's talk talk through the process because in part one you talk a bit uh, you talk about engaging your core. And I guess there's a lot of this is, um, you know, m metaphorically too, like um, like physical exercise. But um, let's face it, engaging engaging your core is something that you're always told to do in every physical exercise, and it's something that we love to try and avoid if we can. You got that right. And and you know, when you engage your core, if you're physically fit, you are you're stronger. You can do any movement easier. You're less likely to get injured. In the same way, when you're thoughtfully fit and you engage your core you have stronger relationships and less conflict. So what does that mean? Well, your core in Thoughtfully Fit is three steps. You pause, think, and act. And the one thing I wanted to share, John, is, you know, while, it, while, while this model uh, mm -hmm. helped me, you know, in this, like you use the word catastrophe, yes, it's really designed to help in any situation sure. where you want to be more thoughtful, right? So you get that email from your boss that really triggers you and you want to get defensive instead of pounding out a response and hitting reply or, or reply all, you, you, you pause in the moment. You just hit the pause button and get off of autopilot. Right. Think, how do I want to handle myself right now? What's triggering me with this? And then you act thoughtfully. Yeah, and no, I love that because um, if there was, if ever there was a model right now for how most of the world operates, it would be act, and I think that's it. I don't think there's a think or a pause, yeah. in, in, even afterwards. It's just act, and and I agree. Yeah, uh, I think this is. I think now is a time when people need to relearn the skill of pausing, um, because let's face it. I mean, Darcy. Um, 
not that you are, but I'm certainly old enough to remember the pre-internet days and whatever, where, where you couldn't, you didn't have the opportunity to fire back immediately. And I think that's a, that's a skill that people need to learn is the ability just to pause for a moment. And yes, the pervasive culture out there and everybody is reactive and immediate, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be. And, and I mean, our pace is quick. There, you know, you get a text and people want an immediate reply. And so it's like we're reinforced to to react yeah. quickly. And and I love how you said, John, you, you just it, pause for a moment. Pause for a moment. Get off of that autopilot, unconscious, reactive mode to think and to slow it down. It might be just a moment. Now, if it's if you're really in a in a place of sure. feeling uh, triggered maybe the pause is a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but that and, and that point about being triggered, I think that's also something that that more people need to pay attention to. Like we all have triggers and they can come up at the, obviously at the most inopportune moments, but they but the, some of them go way, way back and they can be triggered by a look or a comment. And until we recognize those, they're going to continue to trip us up. That's, you're exactly right. And that's what the pause does is gives you a chance to recognize that. And then, the, you know, the thing, so when something happens and you said it's at an inopportune time, yes, yeah, something happens and you have immediately a first thought. That's just what, what, right? And a lot of times when we're triggered, that first thought does not serve you. It, it sabotages you, right? I mean, that first, oh, what a jerk. Who does he think he am? I can't believe. And all of a sudden you are acting from that place of that sabotaging thought. When you can slow it down and pause in the moment, you can think, okay, is this thought serving me or sabotaging me? If it's sabotaging me, what, what's another perspective? What's mm -hmm. another choice I could make in this moment? What do I control? Because at your core, when you're thoughtfully fit, there's two main things. You're always looking at your choices and control. What, what are my choices here? Instead of just assuming something bad happens. Well, I don't have a choice. He, he attacked me. He yep. sent that, that bad email. What choice do I have then to defend myself? So you look at your choices and then you focus on what do I control in this moment? That is where your power is. That's why it's the core. Absolutely. And, and you can choose how you how you choose to interpret what was sent in the first place, because maybe after that pause, maybe after rereading, maybe after calming down, you go, oh, actually, no, it wasn't actually attacking me at all. It was just pointing out something. Uh, and, and therefore, you have just avoided escalating something that didn't need to be escalated. This is, the next part I wanted to come to you about is the internal practices, because here's, I think, something that's really really critical and I think it's so such a shame the way the world has developed to where it's almost like taking time out to think and be with yourself is almost frowned upon nowadays. It is and there is so much research that shows how essential it is. It's counterintuitive. You think well mm -hmm. I can't take time. I can't have any stillness. Uh, because I'm not going to be productive. And it's exactly the opposite. Yeah. That when you can, just like you, you talked about, it's a, it's a metaphor for being physically fit. Any mm -hmm. athlete knows that your muscles grow stronger on the rest days. That if you want to do a marathon, you don't keep training and training and training and training. You build for three weeks and then you take a week off. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is an essential part of that process. Yeah, no, and it is. And unfortunately, it's like people are so afraid of spending that time by themselves because we're so bombarded and you've got your device and everything and there's so many distractions. But I think until people start to to revisit this, just being with yourself and, and just figuring out what's going on in quiet consciousness or whatever, until people do that, they're, they're just going to run themselves ragged. Absolutely. And, and, and even when we look at the internal practices, you can engage your core. Right. So let's say you get an email and it says, John, would you would you chair this fundraising committee for, for this board? Mm -hmm. You know, you, this mission aligns with you and you're so great and you're connected. We really need you. Uh, the first meeting is, you know, May 15th. So in this moment, you read the email, you look at your calendar, you got it, you <laughs> pound out a reply and May 15th comes and you're like, oh, why did I say yes to this? Yeah. Because you were just in autopilot mode. And a lot mm -hmm. of times in that moment, we don't pause to think 
um, is, is this really something that I want to choose to do right now? Do I have the space? Does this align with my, with my values? And if it does align with my values, is it the best use of my time and the best way that I can support this organization and the mission? And, and, and so when those sabotaging thoughts come, a lot of times it's like, oh, if I say no, they're not going to think I care about this, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to like me. They're going to, and, and so that's the place, again, you go back to your core, pause and think, huh, is this the right choice right now for my family and my life? And mm -hmm. if not, then act thoughtfully. And it might be like, oh, I'm so grateful for the invitation. Thank you. I have to decline, but I would be delighted to write a check. I'd be delighted sure. to introduce you to someone else who just said they wanted to do more servant leadership or whatever that, you know, next step might be. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. And I think that when you, when you take that moment out, when you take that time out and you think through it, you are being, and you're being kind to yourself, but you're also being kind to the people who are asking you because you're actually um, making sure that this is something that works for both of you. Because as you said, there's nothing worse than May 15th comes around and you're like, oh, I can't believe I, I signed up for this. And you do a, a half job and nobody's, nobody wins in the end of the day. Um, you don't really want to be there. They can tell you don't really want to be there. Uh, and so it's just a spiral. But sometimes it's also ego gets in the way, isn't it? Like we just think, oh, yes, yes. Immediately say yes to things because <laughs> everybody's so worried about, you know, uh, increasing their exposure. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yes, ego gets in the way. And then also, I think what also gets in the way is just like, we don't, we don't know how to set boundaries and we are fearful we're going to let someone down. And what I'm amazed, the more that I have been strengthening this muscle to, to create more stillness, to say no, is how often I'm amazed. The response is, oh, I, I totally get it. I didn't think you'd say yes anyway. And gosh, thank you for the, for, for the tip or for the donation. There's no anger. That, that sabotaging voice that is telling, convincing me that I'm going to not be liked is not true. Yeah, no, it's not at all. And in fact, um, I, I think one of the other things that a lot of the people should look at is, is look at your concept of why you why you crave being liked or why you think more is more uh, because the reality is that when you do go on journeys of self-discovery and self-awareness and and uh, you know getting yourself fit like this is you often end up reducing the the group around you as opposed to increasing it because you end up focusing on on quality and removing those people who perhaps serve purposes for you but purposes that aren't good yeah, and, and it's about being more intentional and making a choice mm -hmm. instead of just these are the, the 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 people and there's what choice do I have? This is this is these are my neighbors or these are my friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the other thing you tipped on touched on there is this idea of, of acting according to the expectations of others. It's like, so it's expected of me to do this, or I have to do this because some, and often those are are, are, are pretty false as well. You know, they're ones that we've created. Uh, but I like what you talk about is, as we move to the external part is the agility, what you talk about here is responding effectively. And I think that, and that is something that I think everybody in the world could do a crash course in right now. You got that right. Mm -hmm. And and because there's a lot of, I mean, there were enough people problems and challenges pre-pandemic, but then you layer on top of it, the, the, the global pandemic mm -hmm. and the civil unrest and all of the anxiety in the system, people are uh, experiencing a lot of challenges. And, and agility is the, is the thoughtfully fit practice of being able to respond thoughtfully in the moment, especially when you're blindsided instead of reacting unconsciously. And so I like to think about it, you know, as a metaphor of like the uh, playing dodgeball. I don't know, did you, did you have dodgeball? You didn't grow up in the United States, did you? No, no, I grew up in Ireland, um, but um, yeah, I knew dodgeball. In fact, one of my, uh, one of, uh, I'm, I'm into, big into martial arts. One of the student martial art dojang, the studios I used to go to, we used to play dodgeball with the kids before class, which used to be a okay, lot of fun. Okay, so <laughs> you know it then well. Oh, yeah. And so if, if you're in a game of dodgeball and these balls are coming, cruising at you and right, you're, you're getting hit and you're going mm. down and you just, you catch it and you throw it back. There's an opportunity to just, 
you know, choose um, to pause and to, to, to think, okay, do I want to chuck this ball back or do I want to call a timeout? Or do I want to say, hey, we're on the same team here, or, or this is getting out of control, whatever it might be, and then be able to respond thoughtfully instead of just reacting um, because you're blindsided and you are not able to be intentional or thoughtful. Yeah, and and in many ways you're jo you're just joining in, like the the dodgeball's happening, and you're like, okay, well, I better start throwing some, uh, I better start firing some of these balls back at, at other people, without thinking about why are we playing this dodgeball in the first place. Like yes, <laughs> right. Couldn't we play like TV tag or something that's a little bit more fun? <laughs> Um, so the, uh, the, the other part that you mentioned, I just wanted to highlight here because it's fascinating, the um, stretching for acceptance. Oh, that is a big one. You know, of the six obstacles that my research shows, every client that comes to me experiences one of these six obstacles mm -hmm. many times more. I would say uh, flexibility, which is the, 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 the practice of being able to stretch to accept others just as they are, is really the hardest one for many people uh, because we have, we're human, right? We want, if I could be happy, if only my spouse would behave differently, if only they would just put the dishes in the dishwasher, if only my boss would smile, if only people would turn their cameras on and, and Zoom, mm -hmm. if somebody else would behave differently, then I could be happy. Flexibility is saying, I'm gonna choose to be happy and, and, and let go of the energy of being angry that they aren't the way I think they should be and let go of the energy of trying to change them to make them be the way I think they should be. It's exhausting. Yeah, no, it truly really is. A very wise person once uh, said to my wife and I is that, is that, you know, the way we get, we get really angry at something, we say, oh, I can't believe they did that. They always do do this, right? And, and she said, you shouldn't get surprised when people act exactly the way you expect them to be surprised when they do something that you don't expect. Yeah, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Because it isn't how many times we get really worked up over somebody doing something and we go, uh, and they always do, and, and then you're thinking afterwards, yeah, but they always do those kind of things. So why am I surprised and why am I getting annoyed? That's exactly it. And as soon as you can pause, right, the pause can give you a chance to think and ask those questions. What, why am I surprised? Why am I getting annoyed? What do I want to do in this moment that is going to be of the best use of my time and energy? And then act from that place. And I think the other thing, Darcy, which I think was going to become more and more fascinating is that the people who are who don't react, the people who take a moment, the people who seem like they have it more together, they're going to start really standing out because we're in this culture where 99% of people, unfortunately, do the opposite way. It's all about reaction and everything. So over time, these kind of people are going to stand out and people are going to gravitate towards them. Yes, and, and here's the good news, John, is that if you're in one of the 99%, just like being physically fit, you can train and practice and you can be one of those people that is more calm under pressure, that is more thoughtful, that has presence. Uh, you, you know, you, you couldn't wake up and decide tomorrow you're going to run a marathon, but you could wake up tomorrow and go buy a new pair of running shoes and jog four blocks and walk back and build up and be able to do that marathon. In the same way, if you want to have that, that presence and be able to handle yourself thoughtfully, you can train. You can start in the small stuff and pause in the, in the line at the grocery store when someone you know cuts you <laughs> off. And instead of flipping them off and being angry, just take a moment and pause and think, you know, what, what, what other choice do I have right now? Oh, and then I'm go, oh, go ahead. You, can, you go first, it's fine and release yeah. that energy and negativity and then act. And the more you do it on the little stuff, the easier it gets on the big stuff. Yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice, Darcy, because I do think sometimes when people think about things like this, they go, they think they have to go from A to Z immediately. Um, and it's like, okay, um, two weeks time, I should be a fully centered and aligned person if I just do one, <laughs> instead of, as you said, instead of, um, maybe I just look, do baby steps and look for evidence that it's actually working. As you said, like maybe if I'm in the grocery store line and I decide instead to get mad at this person, I'm not, then I feel better, world feels better. Now I have a piece of evidence to show me that, oh, yeah, this actually works. That's right. And look for those small wins. 
just it's, say I'm going to walk four blocks. I'm going to jog four <laughs> blocks and walk home. And that's a small win. That's more than I did yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I interviewed a, a, a guy a couple of years ago who um, I just can't remember his name now, but um, he was, a, a, you know, extremely overweight and, and uh, a total sedentary lifestyle. And he just reached a point where then he said, I'm going to run a marathon. Uh, and he said, like, from the position of where he was, it was like it was ludicrous that he was going to run a marathon. So the first day he got up, he walked for five minutes. And then the next day he did something and then he started running. Anyway, cut a long story short, he obviously made it to doing marathons and that. But the point is that he didn't go out and try and run 20 miles day one and then sort of go, oh, I can't do this. So he just walked five minutes. That's right. And I had been practicing and studying this for decades, which is why when, mm -hmm. you know, when my husband was arrested, uh, I, I was able, I mean, it was, it was hard. Don't get me I'm wrong. Sure. I got that phone call that there's 50 SWAT team and officers out the house, you know, outside of your house. I mean, do you think I wanted to pause and think at that moment? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. like, where are my daughters? What's going on? But here's the thing, you, 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 you do it, you practice, it gets easier. Uh, we're at a place, my daughters and I now, where we're in forgiveness, we're, we're healing, mm -hmm. we're not. And that, that doesn't come naturally, it doesn't come easily without training and practicing. Yeah, no, no, it, it absolutely doesn't. And, and I think it's much easier often just to hold on to everything. So I think, uh, yeah. um, but it's it's easier in the first place to hold on to everything. But over time, I mean, you're basically, as, as you pointed out, you're basically carrying a big weight around with you and you're, you're, you're holding yourself back. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So this is fantastic, Darcy. So the book is Thoughtfully Fit, Your Training Plan for Life and Business Success. All of Darcy's information will be below the video, plus link to the new book, and I would highly recommend you check it out. But before we go, Darcy, um, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah, so I uh, have a company that we, we focus on creating high-performing people and teams by solving their people problems, and we use the Thoughtfully Fit model to do that. And for anybody who's interested in the other obstacles, I love you, 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 you know, you clearly did your homework that there's three internal and three external. Anybody that wants to take a quiz to learn what's their biggest obstacle can go to thoughtfullyfit.com and you answer 10 questions and it's going to spit out which one is your biggest hurdle. And a lot of times just having that awareness is a really important first step. So this is what I've dedicated my life and my passion to. And my company is Darcy Loma Coaching and Consulting. Yeah, absolutely. And I highly uh, recommend people go check, go check it out and, and take the test uh, and check out the book. Listen, Darcy, thank you again. Thank you all for listening and watching. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all again soon.